they are a testimony of how a vision can work. Like I said last night, we don't write the budget down. We write the vision down. Amen. So that we who sees it may run. That's what we do. And this whole thing is something that is built out of God speaking. And if you see, the Bible says we speak things, whatsoever things we speak. In other words, whatever word you speak is a thing. It's a substance. You are speaking things. Oh. You see, I wish I was somewhere else. Maybe the people there will not be this quiet. <laughs> Silence bores me. So in the prophetic we work with noise because our spirits they don't they don't really work well in silence no wonder elijah thought the great wind was god because prophets are always working with noise oh, i feel somebody doesn't get this today i might do some small small Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So when I say prophets, baby, I know you people. I'm going to prophesy crazy. Crazy. You see how it is to hear God. Prophets are not your usual type. No. <laughs> we live in a different planet. You don't just need a visa to get there. You need a rocket. And you need your nations here on earth to really have the real science to get there. We don't live where you can breathe. Mm -mm. That's why we are likened to eagles. Pa. So Kabrahate. Okay. Oh. Oh, shy. I'm seeing the other side. I said, I'm seeing the other side. Uh, uh, uh. I'm in the realm of the spirits. You see, I don't know, you know, how it is that you stand here and you want to minister on miracle money. And at the same time, God wants to show you something. And he says, do both. So, today, I will minister, prophesy, minister, prophesy, minister. In, in other words, so I won't be prophesying. I will be teacher saying. Hey. Wow. You see, when we came to pioneer the prophetic in our nation and in other nations in Southern Africa, I remember a vision that God showed me and my eyes just opened again and I saw the same thing. And this is what I saw then and this is what I see now. Uh, I remember then and it is now because God just referred me to the time I saw it. And I was standing before the Lord, before the meeting. In that time. And this is the same way here. So I liken this thing to this thing. And as I saw in the realm of the spirits, I saw angels arriving before the throne of God. To say, we want to go back, to go to Steel Fontaine. Listen. 
Wait. Wait. And God said, which part? And they said, spirit wait. Wait. And I began to see them approaching the throne room. And I saw Gabriel kneeled before God. I said, I want to be at spirit wedding still fun and watch this and the lord asked him how many minutes can you take and he said two minutes and the lord said that will be late then michael came again and said but i want to be also there and the lord said how many minutes can you take he said i can take 58 seconds and the lord said you are too slow so I saw another one called Mishka came and said, I want to also go. Said, how many seconds can you make? Said, 30 seconds. And the Lord said, you are too late. And the angels went before the Lord and said, Lord, if we are too late, why don't you go? And God said, I don't want to go because I'm already there. You don't understand what I just said. God is in this place right now, right here right now right here oh 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 if you can do this thing so yeah yeah he is here Jehovah Makadesh is here. Jehovah Makadesh. The Jehovah Hagador. Jehovah Hagavot. Jehovah Elkano. Jehovah Chuva. Jehovah Tsori. Jehovah El Kadesh. Jehovah Makadesh. Jehovah El Giboa. Uh, 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 Jehovah Tzidu Kenu Jehovah El Elyon Jehovah Rafa Jehovah Erek Apaim Javier Achumim Jehovah Chikopo Kopa God who doesn't need a runway I want to minister just for 20 minutes in word so I can help ministers on how to get their ministry to have finances. Uh, <laughs> so that when we come next time for this conference, 
we will have a lot of people, pastors loaded with finances. Yeah. 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 We need pastors to say, I can't wait until I can give a billion dollar offering. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes. It should be a problem here. When pastors come and you say we want to take an offering and men of God and women of God queue up to give millions. Yes. Yes. Uh, we cannot address that because many people think, oh, it's not necessary. It's necessary because the Bible says, man answereth all things. Have you ever realized that Jesus in the desert yet 200 denarii? And the Bible says one day's wage is equivalent to one denario. So he had 200 days worth of wages. In the desert where there is no bank. Do you know Judas was Jesus' treasurer? The Bible says for he kept the bag and would steal from within the bag. So if he could steal for three years and Jesus never rebuked him, there was too much of it. Oh, truth is not always good. Uh, uh, uh. Sit down, sit down, because you, you just angered me a little bit. Sit down. Ha, <laughs> Turn to your neighbor, say miracle money. Yeah. Strictly for ministers. I said strictly for ministers. Thank you, brother. You see, some people are clever. And here I'm not talking of some kind of, no. This is miracle money. I mean miracle money. I'm finding money when there should be no money. You're just walking in the street like this. And somebody says, stop there. I remember uh, the time I, 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 I went back to Zimbabwe after about 12, 13, or 14 years in UK and to establish the church. And I, and I was walking in the street and one guy just stopped me. And he said, are you Uber Angel? I said, yeah. He said, I have got my envelope here full of money. I don't know you, never met you before, never heard of you, but I had a dream about you. And God told me to come and wait for you here. He handed the, the, the envelope to me and left. Never seen him again. That's miracle money. I remember one day, Okay, now I'm going to shock you and you might be, ah, this I don't understand what you're talking about. This is dangerous. I really don't care. Do I look like I care? No. Okay, now it's okay. <laughs> I can see you, how quiet. You are used to hermeneutics and hermeneutics and eschatology. This is the problem. Some of us, we just Bible and Bible and word and that's it. That's the spirit and the word, and that's it. Remember, if you have the spirit and no word, you will blow up. If the word and not the spirit, you will dry up. If you have the spirit and the word, you will grow up. I remember, can I testify a little bit now? And remember the message is called miracle money. Miracle. And I'm not talking about any kind of money. I'm talking about miracle money. I'm not talking about the money that you have to go and work for somebody's company and then you get money. No, please remove it from your hermeneutical mind. Huh. That's a prophetic battle cry. 
If you hear me say that, that means I got a name. <laughs> oh, I got someone's name right there. Whoosh! That's another one. <laughs> so, are, you, are we studying now? Are you awake now? Because you might be here as a minister. Ministers have got an ability to act like they're there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we can be like, yeah. And yet be really, really absent. I'm telling you. And if you don't have a notebook, may God forgive you. <laughs> Some people think they can do it. They can just, listen, if you think you can memorize it, it becomes a wish. If you write it down, it becomes a decision. Write the vision down. Don't memorize the vision. I went to the office of the prophet and gave me this, these um, drawings that he had made for the tower and stuff like that. The, it's, it's there. But why is he drawing it? Uh, You see, I will say, no, let him preach now. No, we don't do what you want. I'm the one with the mic today. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to be awake. You are still sleeping. So I didn't have money. Listen, I went to church one day and uh, we had our people there, like seven people. You know, seven, I'm counting me, my wife. And, uh, and I thank God that everyone that I started my church with is still with me. Yeah. Oh, right, I thank God. Amen. Oh, yeah. Everybody I started the church with. Let me tell you the truth. They're still there. That's my wife, of course. Everyone, the other fools left. But anyway. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm telling you the truth. You know, I started the church with my wife. <laughs> The other crazy guys, they left. Now they're trying to come back now. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Let's go. So I went to a service. I, I don't know how many ministers can be, a, can be a testimony of this. I went to a service and I began to preach about how to be financially secure. And I began to speak about finances. How God can bless a man of God. And I was from a bus. You know, I, I took a bus to church wearing a suit like Bus. Talk of speaking lies in hypocrisy. Reverse order. I, I'm in the bus day and I felt like, what am I doing? Right now, I cancel the spirit of bus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> And I go to the church and I begin to minister how God can make you a millionaire and stuff like that. And how God has blessed me financially. And then I got back into the bus. <laughs> went home. I got to my house. Then two couples, they followed us to come and see where the man of God stays. And to have lunch with us. Oh yeah, yeah, you are quiet right there. And you know, in UK, it's different. I don't know, maybe South Africa is different. Maybe my level is now different, so I wouldn't know. In UK, you can actually be on zero. I mean, zero pounds, like zero, nothing, no, no money. Oh, yeah, you can be on zero. No, maybe they don't understand. I mean, zero, nothing. And I didn't have anything. The only food we had was water and tea leaves. No sugar. Not a kind of miracles when that happens, you would be like, you know, I don't really like sugar. See, I don't. <laughs> uh, 
I, I drink tea, but not with sugar. <laughs> now, and, and this couple arrived. Yeah. And we're like, wow. And they've just, they have notes and they are blessed by the notes I gave them about how to be rich as a man. Now one hour passes and I'm thinking these guys are not going. You see when someone visits you and you expect them to leave immediately. <laughs> and one hour they are still with you. And now, now they are removing their jackets and even placing. Uh, 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 what are you doing? And all I have is water. I remember I told my wife, go and boil the water. You know, with me, I'm not very good. I'm not a very good cook. If I cook water, I will burn it. <laughs> no, I don't do that kind of thing. Yeah. Cooking? Oh, no. This is why God invented microwave. <laughs> Just by two seconds. Pa, ta, 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 ta. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. So, I'm, I'm thinking, these guys have my notes on how to be successful. I don't know if I have ministers here. How to have millions. And now they came to see a man of God. And the man of God doesn't have money. So I went up says, on my computer and checked the bank account. It was minus two pounds. You know you are on minus two. If it was two pounds, you know you would try and do something. And in the UK, the problem is you can't withdraw two pounds. And you can't even withdraw five pounds. So even if you find three pounds to go to the bank and top it up, but you see it's Sunday, they are closed. And I'm a man of God who has just preached about finances. And now I've got two of my leaders with their wives. In the house, expecting the man of God to give them just food. Two hours, they are still there. <laughs> now they are talking of sleeping over. I felt like declaring a fast. Let's just all fast, guys. I felt it within me to just declare a fast. <laughs> anyway, I think we are not ready for this message. I I'm telling you, are there any pastors here who can say we are identifying? a lot of things then I went to the bank you know on my computer I minus two hey I said baby go and boil water we will cook today we will cook and my wife began to go downstairs and she began to cook make the water ready for food. Which food? Nothing. No food whatsoever. No rice. If there was rice, would they have said something? Then I checked again on my computer. I said, God, I need money. And God said, what, what are you talking to me about this money for? Oh, you didn't hear that. God says, what are you talking about? What is this money for? Don't cry to me. You, do, do you remember when Moses was now crying to God? Do you know what God said? Why criest thou unto me? Forward march. The man is facing the river. He is facing the river. 
the Red Sea is looking at him. Pharaoh is behind. And he says, God. And God says, why are you crying to me? <laughs> Who should I cry to? <laughs> and God said, forward march. Stop bothering me. Just march into the water. Yeah. And I went to the bank on my computer and I began to explain to the bank who I was. And I said, computer, you have to really obey me. <laughs> because there are people downstairs and you computer in this bank. Because I don't know who is wrong, you see. You are going to put the name of God in disrepute. If I remain on minus two. And I can assure you I'm not going to be embarrassed. But God will be embarrassed. Because all I have done, I have preached this word. Oh, you are still not here. So let's... I'm telling you, you're not here. If we were here, I would have said something. So, I logged off the bank account and went back again to check if it has changed. It was, guess what, minus two pounds. Oh, you didn't see the miracle? It's still minus two. And I'm thinking minus two. What do I do with these people downstairs? I just wanted to go there and I thought of a good plan. Let's have a small service with these leaders and take an offering. <laughs> I think you don't like my testimony and my... You know pastors are very clever. Oh, pastors are very clever. They'll find an opportunity of taking an offering anytime. <laughs> Look at the time when Eutychus died. Eutychus just died. He fell from the window. Bam! And the Bible says because Paul was talking too much, the men could not preach Paul. Oh, talk and talk and talk until someone dies out of his preaching. <laughs> uh, joking with you, Paul was a very good preacher. But just think of it, if it was in this day and age, if you took us a diet in this day and age, and we are all ministering in Utica, pam, dead. Do you know what a preacher would say? They will not go and pray for that, you took us. No, no, no. They will start saying, do you see? The problem of not tithing. <laughs> this is a punishment from God. Ah, you are talking too much. Even the Bible says, after Eutychus rose from the dead, Paul spoke through the night until morning. He couldn't stop speaking, Paul. Now, I realized I was not having any thing here. So I decided I'm going to the bank account, to the bank, to the cash machine. I told my wife I'm going. Be ready. Food is coming. Put my card in the ATM machine, whatever you call it, the cash machine. And guess what? Minus two pounds. Then I sat there and I said, cash machine, I spoke to the bank. I spoke to the computer. So I know the problem is with you. <laughs> oh, you're still not getting my point right now. So I described to it from Genesis. And you see one thing. I'm the only black guy here. There are so many white people behind me waiting to get the money there. And I'm preaching to the cash machine. 
I don't care as long as I will get paid. I explained to the cash machine how God created the heaven and the earth from Genesis. <laughs> oh! Uh -uh. Listen, people have money in your churches. This is why Jesus said to Peter, go to the fish and the fish represents the children in the church it represents souls and the bible says go and find money in its mouth it was not holding the mind the way to find that if you find it in the greek it means to search for it in the mouth so money is not coming from somewhere else it's in your congregants mouth they just don't want to give it to you Oh, some of us, we are honest about these things. Go and take, no, search, find a coin in the mouth of a fish. Yet the, Jesus said, I'll, be, I'll make you fishers of men. That means the people have money. But you need to search it out of them. See, look at even the people are not happy. <laughs> oh, yes, thank you. Now, I'm speaking to my cash machine, and you know, these people now, you know, in UK, a black person, you don't mess up with them. Oh yeah, I tell you now. Who? You see? <laughs> you see, this is what this is what is nice about this church. You know, you don't really care. You know, just just do whatever and it's okay. <laughs> so nobody, all the cute, they never say, Hey brother, move. <laughs> no, and the cash machine is there. I'm not even there like that. No. Standing here explaining. <laughs> so I began to tell it who I was. Then I went to where Melchizedek met Abraham. And he said, behold, Abraham of the Most High God. So I said, do you see this verse cash machine? Behold, you be the angel of the Most High. He's standing before you. Wanting money to, for food. And I put my card back. It was 2,000 pounds. Yeah. 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 Now somebody is thinking, how did that happen? Ah, this is Juju. Let me explain to you. I accept it's Juju. Let's agree. Juju means voodoo, some kind of magic, magic or something. Let me, let me explain. If you can tell me where the fish got his money when Peter was sent by Jesus to take the money from its mouth, if we don't know from scripture where the fish got its money. I will not tell you where the 2,000 came from. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The bank has no record of that money. It doesn't know who put that money in. If you can't tell me where the fish got its money, please don't even argue. Ah, uh, but how come, how come, you know, he says his son was sick, he had one lung. Uh, what, what kind of God is that? Look, I will not explain to you. If you can't tell me why Elijah was bold. Oh, yeah. Bold and he could hear from God. Moses could stammer. And God never fixed his stammer. He stuttered. He just said, your brother will speak for you. Ah, ah. My brother, what about fixing my... Hand? 
You say, I know, I can see now. There is a religious spirit inside. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Now came a time when we wanted to do a thing. Was it in USC? We wanted to do something in conference. And we went to the cash machine. Now, you see, with me, with me, listen to me carefully. With me, if something works, I'm very clever. I will work the daylights out of it. I'm telling you, you know. If, if it works, I'll keep working it. So I go to a day before New Year's Eve with nothing, no money. You see, I still have seven, you understand, people. But we still need to put up a good show. Because we would sit down with my wife, with our pages, and start writing people that we knew, that we could call and say, please come and visit us New Year's Eve. Begging people to come for a conference. You are here, you are looking at me in that kind of tone. We knew everyone. We even have the books now of those names we used to write. We kept them. Now we don't even know if a person leaves the church. We don't know they left. Oh, I'm telling you, I don't even know. Even if 1,000 leave one day, I don't know they left. Way back, we knew. <laughs> oh, you're still not getting me. So, my wife said there is no money for what we want to do. We want to hire this PS system and stuff like that. And those PS systems, we're not even hired for like, you know, $2,000 or whatever. No, 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 no. Very, very, like $80 or 80 pounds or something like that, you know. What was it? But it wasn't there. Amen. And we had to put them, you know, food and stuff like that for them to eat after ministering, you know. And we didn't have anything. You'll be shocked when I start prophesying all. Now, <laughs> and I still heard God. I was still hearing. You know, I started prophesying in grade two at the age of seven. So it's not like something I just found out two days ago and said, hey, I can call people by name. No, way back. And when I'm saying started, that's as far as I could remember. That's the, I, what I can remember. I can remember prophesying the, my, my brother's child, what he will be like when he will be born. And exactly that. I don't know if you are with me. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. Now, I said to my wife, don't worry. You know, because I had, um, I had the cash machine to speak to. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we decided, we went to this cash machine, and it didn't work. Ah. Uh, so I decided this one is just being disobedient. <laughs> Let's find another one. <laughs> then we found another one. Boy, I spoke to it. <laughs> the only problem, this one had a long queue and these ones, these ones were not so nice, these guys. That were behind me, but I never listened. I kept on putting the cut. Zero. We're over a thousand dollars. So, men of God, is this what you do every time so that you can be rich? No. Remember when Jesus multiplied the bread, the five loaves and the two, right? Do you notice that when they were collecting the leftovers, it was only bread that they were collecting? No fish. In other words, if that's your profession to get fish, we, God will not multiply it. What you can do on your own. God will perform a small miracle because he has already given you the five senses. And the... If all these guys were bakers, God would have increased fish more than bread. Don't be lazy because there is miracle money. 
is what I'm trying to do here. Because some people say, I will not start a company. I will just get him to lay his hands on me and bam, miracle money. Now I'll show you how it happens. It doesn't start by just going to the cash machine. It starts where I'm about to teach you. Open your Bibles in the book of Proverbs. And as you already you know the drill, Proverbs is actually after the book of Revelation. <laughs> just after it. Just flip, flip, flip like that. You see it. After Revelation chapter number 36. Somebody will be looking for chapter number 36. <laughs> Isn't it a wonder how ministers we know songs in the world, word for word, and we don't know how many books are in there? We don't know. We still use the table of contents up to now to find a book. I'm telling you. Table of contents. Okay, Mark, John. Okay. Where is Genesis here? <laughs> and we are ministers. It's amazing. I can sense something. The environment is just shifting. I says it's shifting. Can I teach a sign? Now watch this. Proverbs chapter number 22. And like I told you before, we don't even need to go to another verse and find something that links with this one for it to work. No. We just go to the second verse after we read what we read. Are you here? Shout yes if you're here. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, listen to Miracle Money. Okay. Let me just show you something, an example that is very, very simple. Say to your neighbor, money. money. Say to your neighbor, money. money. Oh, they're not responding. Slap them on the shoulder. Slap them on the shoulder. No, no, I said slap them on the shoulder. Say money. Now, now, now kiss them. Oh, look at you. Do you see when I said beat someone up, you did it easily. Now love someone. No. You see, sin is very easy to do. <laughs> Slap someone on the shoulder. Kiss them. Ah. <laughs> A sin is very difficult to do. Yet the prophet was talking about love here. Love is like, uh, what ended into him? But beating up someone, you're okay with it. Let's <laughs> Proverbs 22. Verse number 6. <laughs> Verse number 6. Says it this way. Are you here? Train up a child in the way that he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. That's the verse I wanted. That's it. Are you hearing this? Train up a child in the way that you should go. When he grows up, he will not depart from it. Now, many preachers have said, oh, if you train your child in following God, you will not live. Yet we know pastor's kids that are wayward and some died with no Jesus in them. Yet they are pastor's kids. Yet the pastor taught them something. So is the Bible wrong? No. We interpreted it wrongly. We don't know what we should teach our children. What is the Bible saying we should teach them? Read the next verse. The rich rule over the poor. That's what you teach your children. Oh. Oh. Oh, I can see. Yeah. You don't need to go to another verse. No. It's right there. What do I train my child? The rich rule over the poor. And the borrower is servant to the lender. If I keep telling my child that, you will not depart from being rich. Oh. I think the next thing that I want to talk about will not work.
when we were growing up we were simply told especially in africa we are told be a teacher yeah being a teacher was something like wow school teacher primary age oh, wow it was the epitome of jobs the highest you can get be a teacher it doesn't matter how, many, how, much, how, how much you get paid, how lousy they pay you. Be a teacher. Are you a teacher? Yes. Good. And the next, if your father was a little bit cleverer, you would say, doctor. They never measured the salary. Just, Are you a doctor? My son is a doctor. Yet the Bible says, Teach your child in the way that he should go. When he grows up, he will not depart from it. What do I teach my child? The rich rule over the poor. As a pastor, refuse to be poor. I said refuse to be poor. Refuse to be poor. As a man of God, as a woman of God, refuse to be poor. Your biggest problem as a man of God is this. Sit down. When we begin to teach something like this. You know when I was young. My brother bought this thing called Nissan Marino. A nice car. Wow. Nissan Marino. When you look at it you say wow. This, there is no better car than this. And I remember it broke down and, and my brother was given a replacement car. You know, something that to replace your car when it's being sorted and, and just they give you something to drive and it was a 120 Y. When you turn it, it would do like, oh. I think it was made in that way so that when you turn, you don't really hit people. Just you turn around, be ah, ah, ah. But you see, even the seats were hard. No power steering. Very hard driving. <laughs> then I grew up and I bought my own Mercedes Benz. You see, you see the new E-Class? Now, just for your own information so that it can bore you if you want to be bored. The Mercedes-Benz that I have now is my 12th or 13th Mercedes-Benz. Yeah, because, you see, I have a Bentley, I have Range Rover, I've got all this, I've got Dodge, I've got mercedes I've got S-Class, I've got whatever. What for you are one person. It's not your money, it's mine. Yeah, sometimes I just want to get one leg here, another leg in a Bentley, say, these are mine. <laughs> Drive to the gate and then turn around and park and say, I'm getting into another one now. <laughs> Why would a man buy a Bentley? Because there are some kind of cars that persecution doesn't get in. <laughs> you see, you... <laughs> Forget, forget I said anything. <laughs> forget it, forget it. Now, with the new E-class, it can measure the distance between a car and just keep it there on its own. Even if you speed up, it won't bridge that two, two car space. And when you drive it, you can see a sign like 80 miles per hour. You don't need to reduce the car can pick that sign on the side, bring it into the system, and then change the speed on its own. My Ara class, it has got sensors under the thing, and it has got cameras that see like 50 meters away. So if it sees that there are portals in front, it tightens the chassis so that it will be able 
And you can even feel the adjustments. You're still not hearing my point. You're still not getting me right. If you get into an upgraded Bentley, it's like when you hold the thing like this, the steering wheel, and you breathe. It has got a breathe, you know, that, 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 in that sense, your breath. And if you are drunk, it won't start. No, you are still not getting my point. Oh, I have a Bentley, so don't even try to think, is it possible? Now, if you manage, just to, to just imagine a little bit, if you are coming from a 120Y, and you are thrown into my Bentley, and it starts adjusting, you run. Say, hey, the car is malfunctioning. You are the one malfunctioning. What I'm saying is this. What I'm saying can be very difficult for you if you are used to a 120 Y church. Oh. If your church is like a 120 Y, you will never understand what I'm saying. It seems like we are malfunctioning here. But just come to spirit where you will see we can touch some few things. Up in here we can touch some few things. But if you are in your one twin Y, in your Marino, you can think we are the ones at fault. When you are the one at fault and your church is at fault. I know what I just said doesn't really work. Think of the many things they accuse the church of doing. This church, my church, whatever, your church. They are accusing it. Yet you are advanced, you are already somewhere. Because they are a 120 white church. They are used when they turn, you say, oh. With us, we turn when God turns. And, and before you, you turn with us, we are already turning this direction. We are going, you, you see, so you never understand it. You are 120 white, my brother. So anyway, forgive me for your one twenty church. Forgive me. Let's deal with this Bentley now. Are you ready for the Bentley? That's good. So train up a child in the way that he should go. Now I want you to understand. So the rich rule over the poor. Money answereth all things. Oh, but money is not everything. You are just opposing the Bible. Money is not everything, yes, but it answers everything according to the Bible. Oh, he can give you a good preacher. Money. Oh, yeah, he can give you, get you from Botswana by plane to come into a conference like this. Money. It won't give you the Holy Ghost. But it will position you in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Money is important. Even the Bible says, make friends with the mammon of the righteous and righteous. Uh -uh. I have money. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't mean like confession, no. Oh, I have it. Right now we brought, I don't know how many people, 15 or whatever it is from Zimbabwe, by plane. My money, not their money. I paid. When you have money, it's easy. You don't really think about it. Even, I don't even know the bill. There were times with my wife when we would sit down and we start creaking. Hey, how much is left now? Two. So two, 
to Ayaya. You see, you find yourself speaking in tongues. Oh, May you get the same grace. I said, may you get the same grace. May you get the same grace. May you get the same grace. Look at the, the grace that people have. Just I was having my birthday here and uh, people uh, auctioned one of my shirts. You know, you're a minister, so uh, you know, I can do whatever I want with you and I can tell you the truth. I don't wear cheap. Every one of my shirts is called Angelo Galasso and that's 1,000 pounds a shirt. Now, yeah. So they sold that shirt and it was like, who wants to get it because, you know, just wants to get it. It was bid for, I think, $10,000. And it was in the newspapers. How can he take money from the poor? What, what kind of a poor person has got $10,000? Uh, <laughs> what, what kind of a poor person has got $10,000 to spend on a shit? have the money. The poor don't have money. How can they bid for a 10,000 shirt? They are even talking about it. I think the gifts alone went over 1 million US dollars, right? No, the money, the finances is 1,000 over 1 million US. For my birthday. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm talking about cash. I'm not talking about some... Not runs, please. please tell your neighbor, not runs. U.S. This is why I never come for a conference to ask for money. Never. And if I go to preach, I'm simply here. You know, very few places I go to preach. I, I don't know of any other place. Except my brother's church. Yes, that's our family. I don't know if you understand. My brother had his own thing and raised over half a million just as a gift for me. U.S. dollars. In with his own church. Yet they are talking, the whole of Zimbabwe is talking about a $10,000 shirt. You see, poverty will make a man jealousy. But I want, to, I want to show you something. Every social critic is broke. Have you seen political analysts? They are all broke. They know what's wrong with Zuma. They know what's wrong with Mugabe. They, they know what's wrong with Bill Clinton. They know. But accept themselves. They are broke. Huh? How can you use money like that in this church? When we were going together to the BIO, you never told me to stop buying drinks. Now I have started attending church. Be, be care, beware, beware. Cobas will steal your money. Ah. Now you have become my accountant. When we're drinking beer, you never. <laughs> I would buy you round after round and you never complained. I start going to church, doing the right thing. Now you're complaining. No, these people will steal your money. Ah, these people. Don't, don't give them their, the tithe. The spending tithe. You know, in, we, we can't talk about spending tithe. We say eating tithe. Not spending. They will eat your tithe. Especially in Africa, we say eat your money. Yeah, we understand money in Africa. It, it's eaten. It's not spent. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they will eat your money. Don't give people your tithe. They will eat your money. Okay, so if I don't give them my tithe, they will suffer. God will kill them for eating your tithe. Oh. So where do you take your tithe? I don't take it to anyone. So what do you do with it? 
you eat it. So we are all eating tithe here. <laughs> we are all eating tithe. You and I, we are eating tight. So, don't even try to correct me. <laughs> if you think twice, you'll be the wisest in your generation. Now, I want to understand, if the borrower is servant to the lender, please, pastors, you are very clever. You are clever people. I can see your face. You are very clever. What is the power of a lender over the borrower, please. What do you think? Just one. The power, because the Bible says the borrower is servant to the lender. What can the lender do to the borrower, please? Huh? Interest. He can charge interest rate over the money that you have borrowed. Is that, are we correct? Can I have five ministers here, please? stand here. Thank you. These are real ministers. The other ones didn't even come. <laughs> Let's face these people. You see, this is, are you, are you all pastors in Africa? You know, pastors in Africa can't count. I said I want five here. <laughs> this is why if you ask a pastor in Africa, how many people do you have? Say, oh, 2,000. You know they have 300. <laughs> You need to reduce it every time. Divide by three. <laughs> you say, so how many members do you have? Ah, around, around 200, 200. You know there are two. <laughs> Pastors. Ah. <laughs> there is a spirit of lying in pastors. <laughs> Big one. Anyway, forget that part. <laughs> so he can charge interest rates. You, so you know interest rate. Yours is interest rate. What can he do? Control to do what? To, he can get you arrested if you don't pay back. So he can get you arrested if you don't pay back. Remember, on arrest. And he can choose the day where you pay back. What else? Surety. What can you give him? What can he hold while least you are with his money. Uh huh. He can take it all away from you. We are okay now. So, what are you? Interest. Arrest. The day to pay back. Surety. Take it all away. Now, so the Bible has told us that if somebody, if we find a way of becoming lenders, we can choose the interest rate. Interest. Arrest. Arrest. The day to pay back. Surety. Take it away. We can do all this if we become lenders, boys and girls. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can do it. So the Bible is telling us, train up a child in the way that he should go. When he grows up, he will not depart from it. The ruler, the poor people are seven to the lender. The borrower is seven to the lender. And the rich rule over the poor. So we want to find a way where we can be lenders. But at the same time, we need to find the right person to lend to. Because if we lend to a thief, he might run away and all these benefits will not come to us. So number two, we are want to find two things. How to be a lender as a man of God and as a woman of God. And how to lend to the right person who can give interest. Arrest. Arrest. The day to pay back. Surety. Take it away. Okay. Are we together? It is very, very simple. But I know you will not even catch it when I finish reading it. Go to, go, just say flip a page back and that's chapter number 19. Please, if the Bible is yours, underline. If it's not yours, underline still. <laughs> because, you know, what kind of fool will give you his own Bible and not allow you to underline? Underline. <laughs> even if you borrowed it. Are you here? What are we trying to find, guys? We are trying to find ways of becoming the lender. Yes. 
and the person to lend to. You okay? Verse number 16 of chapter number 19. Are you there? And I want you to, before you read verse number 16, because it's very explosive, I want you to notice this. The word poor in this Bible, in the book of Proverbs, is the word rush. Rush means poor. No, it means needy. Or where there is a need. And rush also is another word that is used for the church when it's in need. Rush. So the word poor, you just replace it with rush or you leave it there. It's still okay. Don't cry. He that keepeth the commandment, keepeth his own soul. Ah, are you here? Yes. But he that despises his words shall, shall die. Look at it. He that keeps the commandment, keeps his soul. In other words, God says, if I keep my word, I also remain God. And if you go to Psalm 138, verse number 2, he says it this way. For you have exalted your name above all names, and your word above your own name. That means the word of God is a law unto him. He cannot break it. The day he breaks it, he, become, he becomes someone who is not God. He ceases to be God. So he can't break his word. It's a law unto him. So I need to know now what he says now. Listen to this. He that hath pity, or he that gives upon the rush, the needy, the poor, the church, lendeth unto the Lord. Oh, you didn't hear that. I know you were slow. Ah. No, let's close. No, 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 it's, it's, not, it's not worth it. You still didn't hear, right? Did, did you notice what the Bible says? It says, if we become the lender, we will rule over the borrower. Then chapter number 19 says, if we give to the church, God becomes the borrower and we become the lender. Who is now boss when you give? Oh. See, you are, you are trying to remove a religious spirit right now. God says, Jesus. I wish I was in Steel Fontaine. I don't know what this place is. The rich rule over the poor. The lender is king over the borrower. And God says, if you give me. This is why you are sit still sitting there. I'm even confused. If you give to the poor, if you give to the rich, if you give to the church, God becomes the borrower. You become the lender. So who becomes king here? Don't come now. Please wait. Okay. Pastor Kingsley, come here. Come, come man of God. Let's say this is your seat. No. No. Sorry. This is your seat, right? And you have understood this revelation. Do you know what that means? That means with your mic. I need your mic. That means interest. I can, before I get there with my money, I can say, God, I'm lending to you. And I need interest rate. Oh, you are slow. No, please, please don't give now. Don't give now, please. Please, don't. You mess the whole thing up. Please. Because you are just throwing your money away. Wait. The rich rule over the poor. What is the power of the lender? Interest. Arrest. Charity. Take it away. Get here to pay back. So I put it there, and this is Pastor, and he says, This is my money. The day to pay back, right? Yes. I want it back on Tuesday.
Oh, you're not hearing me. And what's your thing? Interest. Interest. And I want it as 500 on Tuesday. Uh -huh. Arrest. If you don't pay, you are liable to be arrested. Uh -huh. Surety. Surety. Why at least I'm still waiting for this? Since I've given all my rent. I need surety. I need security that I will not be ever a, evicted from my house. I, I, uh, forget it. And what else? Take it away. You can take, take it away. away. If you don't give me on Tuesday, Father, I have now the right. Since according to your word, listen, we are not trying to control God. He is the one who said, I can be controlled this way. Mama, there is somebody you are going to help. There is somebody you are going to help. Because I see this guy will be Mayrand. Who is Mayrand? Like there is Mayrand and Marie Lou Rooks. Rooks. You know, you know these people? Mayrand Rooks. That's uh, my mom's sister's children. Rooks, uh, like Rooks. Marie Louise and Mayrand Rooks. Huh? No, but it's like musician. He's like, you know, because if maybe, because I'm seeing the smell of cigarettes. Huh? Yes. That's true. I, I uh, recorded his album. He just that. cigarettes. Just because. <laughs> I don't know whether it's Cape Town or Pretoria. Pretoria. He used to, he used to live in Pretoria. Pretoria. Cape Town. He moved to Cape Town. Yeah! Yeah! Is the wife like M A R I? M A R I. She doesn't know them at all. Marie. Ah, but who is this one to you? Because I saw light here. It's my mother in law. Your mother in law. Okay. Now. smokes a lot. Smokes a lot. If he didn't smoke that much, he probably would have been a millionaire. <laughs> but he smokes because of the... <laughs> but there is something coming upon you as well. I'm coming. Because why I went to this place, I saw light here. So, because I was not expecting to prophesy to him as part of the leaders. Stand up. The Lord is going to give you a lot of dreams. It's prophetic dreams. And this we have to do with something, the connection you have with this family. And there is something even in the recent months, you have developed a real passion for this family. It has gotten even deeper than before. And God wants you to understand that your daughter did the best that God had planned for her. Because there was even a time when you thought she could have done something better. Ah. Now I'm a prophet, I just say what God is saying. Yes, that's right. That's right, prophet. Because the opportunities of going to countries and coming back to countries and drive, da, 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 da. then it's just like, shh, God, this man. Now when I came here, I saw like a red spot here. Here. That means there is like a collapsed lung. That's true. That's true. true. Me! 
teenager. The Bible says, let your profiting appear to all. My brother, your desire is going to be fulfilled. But I see things that you've never come. There is also somebody that will be blessed by your anointing. And the name will be Sarah. It's like, it's, my daughter. You are, it's your daughter. Yes. Ay, 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 ay. I told you today is a day for white people. Yeah. Smile. We are a happy church. Yeah. So look at this. Ah. Not sitting, his daughter will be standing next to him. And Bobby, just before this, before while we were singing, he said to me, Who's Sarah? She's standing next. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Did you do you know did you know Sarah? You know Sarah? No, I don't know. She was here once, but I forget names. You forget names. Yeah. And when you said Because Sarah, this is Sarah Leger. Yeah. Yes. God said to him that she would be preaching next to him. How many daughters do you have? Do you even know the conduct you had with your daughter way when she was young? Let me explain. Because I don't know why, because you used to be like a distant person. When I'm talking about the distant person, it's like a person who drinks. Yes, that's true. Please, this is your past. I'm, yeah. you know. All this is to prove what I'm about to say. And there is a link between what happened between you and your daughter that caused you to change. In fact, your daughter is an instrument why you became deeper in the Lord. Exactly, yes. Yeah. The voice of God came from my daughter. Because it's like, it's like you would get drunk. I know now you are drunk with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. happened between your daughter and you. It's like an exchange of words or something. I don't know what exactly, but when you looked at here, you realized, no. I need to change for my family Amen. and for myself. Yeah. That's true. And also, the thing with you men of God is not because it's a lot of hurt. When I say a lot of hurt, you were a hard man. Your heart was hard. Yes, you wouldn't even think of anything. You would do something and never think about it. That's true. Then the Lord began to minister to you deeply in your spirit. In fact, there were angels of the Lord mm. that began to appear around his, him every time he would travel. To an extent that when he stopped what he was doing, he could sense if... When you wanted to have a, well, I don't know what you call it, a back something, uh, drawback or something, you would feel like somebody's watching him. Yes. And the Lord is ministering to me. It was actually Angel Gabriel going around with him. Wow. Was always around. He could feel like, no, somebody's following. And many a times when he's praying and we're praying, he feels the presence of angels around. Okay. And he opens his eyes. At first, you could even make up things when you squint your eyes, you could make up. But then he's just like, Whew. And the Lord is ministering to me. He is getting you back into visions. Amen. But the thing that you start by doing is to start dreaming. You will start dreaming and dreaming and dreaming. But I'm hearing something. I'll talk to you about it. Because I saw something written in Spain or Spanish. Going straight to another place. But this will be happening in Louisiana.
Louisiana. I'm from Louisiana. Huh? I'm from Louisiana. You, you are coming from Louisiana? Yes. I'll tell you something in your ear that will, you will enjoy. Spanish rod or Spanish trail. Spanish rod. Crawley. I mean, I think they mentioned Crawley yesterday. Crawley. Crawley. Is it Crowley? That's the city I'm from. Crowley. That's where the city you are from. Yes. I'm hearing a restoration and I didn't want to do this because I was battling with it and just God no I, I and I'm hearing a restoration Amen. restoration I, it's like it's a bold word across your forehead written restoration wow. it's a big thing like restoration but it will be restoration for finances yes. number one number two restoration for spiritual gifts that people will not argue with you. You will stand there and say, this is how it's going to happen, yes. and this is going to happen this way. Yes. Yes, Jesus. And there is a strong mantle right now coming over you for First of all, a mantle of the apostolic it's like there is an apostolic mantle upon this man it's an apostolic mantle to the extent that you'll be able to flow in all these gifts Sometimes, sometimes, you don't know what to do with God. Sometimes, I look at myself and think, what did I do to deserve this? And then I realize, the only thing I did well was sin. When, when I got born again, the devil went into a depression. He said, we lost a good man. Said, my God, we lost a good man. We should have kept him. I was very fluent at sin. I would sin today and know it after two years that I had actually sinned. I was fluent. I was fluent. As a man of God, I should not tell you this. But don't doubt what I'm telling you. Don't doubt what I'm telling you. Receive it. Don't doubt. This is the only condition you have. Don't doubt restoration. I receive it. Because you have prayed about it. You have prayed for things. You have prayed for... Even right now, you are doing very well. And many men of God admire what power you minister by with. They admire it. But you have not started. Ah. Oh, you have not started. I said you have not started. Oh. <laughs> you are going far, very fast. <laughs> I said you are going far, yes. very fast. Jesus. Very far, very fast. thing even yesterday when I was ministering you felt something from the pits of your stomach yes, sir. it was like it's rising and you just wanted to burst sitting there yes. to break it's like let me do this man ah, yes, sir. and when people would look at you they would just see someone sitting down a man of God sitting down 
a powerful man of God sitting down, and that's true. But what they didn't see was the chaining up of the spirit inside. His spirit was turned on. It's like somebody just put a light bulb in danger. Pop! That's true. And he began to think, what is this? What is this? But can I prophesy? I said, can I prophesy? Yes. Nine months in my mother's womb, I was born to do this. Yes. So the Lord took me on a high mountain. And I began to see angels visiting him. To an extent that when he begins to pray now, from right now, he will see things, even dreams will come to him of angels ministering with him. Because there's been, because I see one particular dream when he actually saw himself prophesying. Ah. Yes. It was like healing and prophesying and people were listening. It was like people, a lot of people were listening to what he was saying. And then when he came out of that, he thought it was going to happen like that. But in everything that we do as men and women of God, he needs somebody who can unlock that door. Yes, yes, sir. Consider that door unlocked. Yes. I said, consider that door unlocked. What do you want God to do for you, sir? To be able to have my ministry growing in such an awesome way as I travel all over the place, bring the youth that in this country and all over the world to a place where they can honor God and live a life to bless God wherever they go, that the great and mighty things that the generation to come still in this country and wherever in Africa will not be poverty, but will be in a place where they have no sicknesses, no poverty anymore, and just be blessed, blessed, blessed. I think that's a good request. I think so. All of it. Let's say, let's say for example, I, I hear God. Let's just assume I hear God. He said yes. Remember, we are, we are just assuming. We are just assuming I hear God. Let's assume you said yes. Yes. Take it to the bank. Amen. I prophesy with my eyes closed, with my eyes open. The desires that you have for ministry, for the kingdom of God, shall be fulfilled. By this time next year, you shall see a great change. Amen. Glory.
prophet, what did you say? What, what happened? Right before this service, we were having coffee and he asked me to get prophet Angel to go speak to him concerning his ministry. And did you speak to me? No, there was no chance to. <laughs> Do you see? It's not your face when I move towards you. It's not your face that calls me to you. No. It's the spirit of Jehovah. <laughs> he measures your heart. Weighs your heart. After weighing your heart, then he says, ah, I can do something. Before I continue, before I continue, listen to me. Are you are you listening? Yes. Are you listening? Yes. So, whenever, and I'm going to prophesy very, very soon. My wife will be prophesying as well. Whenever, oh, you can keep standing. It remains standing. It's okay. I'm also standing. <laughs> whenever you want finances to work in your life. As long as you know, I can change from being a borrower to being a lender. Yes, I can borrow from people. I have already borrowed. But now I need to come out of it now and be the lender. Amen. And what is the best way of being coming a lender? But lending to God. And who becomes the borrower? God becomes the borrower. And who becomes the lender? I become the lender. And according to Proverbs 22, the borrower adheres to the rules of the lender. So God starts by telling you that you can become a lender in chapter number 19. Then he goes to 20, maybe you have forgotten. 21, maybe you have forgotten. 22, he says, okay, I've just told you I can be a borrower and you can become the lender. Now I'm telling you, do you want to control me? If you want to control me, lend to my church. So I want you to take the loan out of your pocket. Take a loan. You didn't hear. Because remember, we are lending God's church. Oh. Oh. My spiritual father, uh, are you hearing this? Yes. See, some have already decided now, it's time to ah. sit down now. My spiritual father went to pro pray for people in America. And when he got there, he is now prophesying. And this man gave like $10,000 and just put it there in front on the pulpit. And that's all he had. All he had. Then his wife, his, daughter, his son, suffered from cancer. And the doctors were saying, it's only two weeks left. And he's in hospital with tubes and everywhere. And the man called my father in Ghana. I said, on the day you ministered, you said we can give seats. Now I'm having a problem now. My son is sick. And yet God took my $10,000. And he said, no. I have weighed your heart and I know you are genuine. I've also looked at your life and you have not sinned. So now, the problem now is with God, not with you. Because you can't just come because you gave. We have to weigh your, your heart and your spirit. Are you holy? Have you not sinned? And he said, I didn't take your money. I spoke God's word and you responded to God, not to me. So what do I do, prophet? Go back to the altar where you gave money. And tell God, on the day your servant was ministering, I gave my all. And now the devil is about to take my all. So he went to church, opened the door, and went to the pulpit with everything. And he knelt down and said, God, 
what that day you took all my ten thousand dollars now my son who is my all i don't have another son is about to die on this altar where i gave you my all give me back my all went back after five hours the doctors called I've just done a checkup. Nothing wrong with this man. Your problem is you are simply people who are emotional givers. There is no contract you are creating. Hannah realized if I keep on saying to God, give me a son. He's not doing it. Because mercy is for children. Covenant is for mature Christians. Why you are not getting the financial miracle you, you want? It's because you are asking for mercy. God, God, money, mercy for this money for us to rent. No, God does not respond to immature people who are asking for mercy. He has already given us, Jesus Christ, the highest mercy he can give is now waiting for mature believers who are talking about covenant. God, I know what you don't have. You don't have a prophet. And I know what I don't have. I don't have a son. So we are both in a fix here. You have a problem, I have a problem. You don't have a prophet, I don't have a son. So let's solve each other's problems, God. You give me a son, I'll turn that son into a prophet for you. And God said, oh, okay, this one can work. In your miracle, try to solve God's problem. Then you can get what he wants. What you want. We have people that their ministries never move until they respond to what I'm saying. You are sitting there, you know. You are the one. You want something. God to do something for you. Oh yeah, Pakaskata. Respond as a man and a woman of God. I gave all I had on the pulpit. I gave it all. Now, there is not going to be an offering after this one. This is your offering and this is it. But let it be alone to God. I'm giving you something. And you said I have become the lender and you have become the borrower i'm struggling i want to rent and my rent i only have 200 runs and my rent is 2000 if the money you have is not big enough for what you want then the money you have is seed money if i want a car for five thousand dollars get all i have is two hundred dollars then i should not be in keep it so that i can top it up it simply means i don't understand spiritual things it becomes a seed <laughs> it becomes something my brother god is going to reward you for your love god is going to reward you I don't think God has forgotten. No. He's going to reward you. I'm going to lay hands on you. Hallelujah. People are waiting and they're sitting there thinking he's going to say something else. No. It's not an opportunity to try and take money from people. No, no, no. no. That's not what we are trying to do. This is why we are giving you all these big testimonies. That's not what we are trying to do. We are trying to help you. The only way you can succeed is if you give. If you don't give, there is nothing that will happen. It's not even... <laughs> no. Give. 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 See, I've given a lot in my life. Now, oh, prosperity is above me. 
behind me, in my, everywhere. You see, when you, you don't know what to thank God for, you want to thank him for the $2,000 he gave you yesterday. Then someone gives you $10,000. You're about to kneel down and say, Father, I want to thank you. And someone says, I've just deposited $50,000. I don't know if you're hearing this. Somebody say, they just preach prosperity, prosperity. Yes, we have to. Because you are preaching poverty, poverty. We have to balance the equation. If you are preaching poverty, why are you hammering us? You want us to preach what you are experiencing. Oh, but men of God, the disciples didn't have that kind of money you are talking about. You mean the disciples? They were told by God, the disciples, Jesus told them something. He said, it is difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you know what the disciples said? He said they were exceedingly amazed, perplexed, shocked, perturbed. <laughs> saying, who then can enter into heaven? You see, it didn't really flow down well. You didn't hear that. It meant they were rich. They didn't say, hooray, we are getting into heaven. They say, ah, who then can enter into heaven? If we are not going, who is going? And the Bible specifically says, and Jesus beheld them. In other words, the boys were leaving. And Jesus said, okay, 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 okay. With men, it is not possible. But with God, all things are possible. That's what he told his disciples. Don't go, please. Don't go with God. It is possible for you to also enter. Please. Think of 11 men. I'm not putting 12 because another one is Judas. Think of 11 men. 11 men. 11 men. Jesus dies. Resurrects. And do you know what he does? What they do? Peter turns around and says, let's go a fishing. Oh, you didn't hear that. That means when they joined Jesus, they did three years with their companies running in their absence. You know when you can leave your company for three years and still come back and it's still running. Why you don't have a treasurer? It's because you don't have money. There is no fool who can have a treasurer just to call the treasurer to take a $1 from him. Say, how are you, Mr. Treasurer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can you come over? What do you want to say? My $1. And Jesus had a treasurer called Judas. And he used to steal from there. We are talking about wearing perfume, creed, Gucci, million, one million. And, and people are talking as if it's too much. These pastors are talking about perfume, talking about perfume. Jesus, his perfume was more than 300 denarius worth. It's like a year's wage, just perfume. Oh, but Jesus was born in a manger. Where? Where do you find that kind of Bible? A Bible with three wise men. The Bible never says three wise men. It was just wise men. And wise men with chariots and horses. And those wise men, magi, it means wise men from the east. And when you hear wise men from the east, that word that was used there was for kings. Listen, if a Uber angel is going to bless you with a gift, don't ever think it's going to be a birthday card. No. I give you something that tells you of my status. Gold, frankincense, and may. You just want to talk about frankincense and may. What about the gold? If this gold is wrong, why didn't the Lord Jesus say, no, please, all those who give me gold, I give it back. No. Jesus is in heaven. God is in heaven walking on gold as pavement. And yet in South Africa, we are killing each other because of gold.
pavement. You are sitting there, you are a minister of the gospel, son and a child of the king, and you don't have money. I want to take these preachers who advocate for poverty to come to this place one day. And let's say we cut this thing in half here. And please, this is an example. And we say all these on this side are sinners. And they have Lamborghinis, Mercedes-Benz, mansions. And we say all these are Christians on the half side. And we see poverty and lack and hunger. And these are Christians. And the rich are looking at us and think, are these the sons of the king? When you take it as people, just some people are poor are between us, it's okay for you to preach poverty. But when you take Africa as for Christians and becoming poor, and you take America as rich people only and no one Christian and they become rich. There's a problem there. The Bible says we are ambassadors for Christ. It means one thing. We are ambassadors. An ambassador is not paid by the country he is sent to. But paid from home. And when the rand goes down in value, the ambassador is not affected. Why? He uses his US dollar to override the rand. And you are seated there. I'm an ambassador for Christ. And I'm an, uh, an ambassador for Christ. What embassy are you coming from? What country? A country where they walk on gold. And yet, you can't even have 2,000 rands to pay your rent. Yet your country, they are walking on gold. Yet we are ambassadors. Do you know if an American ambassador to South Africa is beaten by someone in the street, it's an assault case. But if a minister whoops him on the face, it becomes a declaration of war against America. Maybe you didn't hear that. If South Africans beat each other, it's an assault case. If a South Africa, whether prominent or not prominent, beats an ambassador, they, there will be war. It might be war of words, a cold war, or really firearms between two countries. Whosoever will refuse you alone as an ambassador of heaven has declared war against heaven. Amen. Whosoever will deny you access to finances as a minister has just declared war against heaven. You are more than what you think. But because as ministers, I want people who preach to stand up for now. Just those who preach. You minister somewhere, or maybe your husband ministers. I don't, I'm not saying full time. I just say you preach somewhere. I don't care where. If you've ever preached somewhere, I want you to stand up now. Listen, I don't mean uh, just somewhere, you know. <laughs> if you're a minister, I want it to be possible for you. This is an altar that will take all you have now, today. It's not Prophet Cobbas. He's also standing to give. God. It's not Uber Angel. Uber Angel just read the scriptures and you have believed them. Don't believe me. Believe the scriptures. I can't do anything for you. Believe the scriptures. I saw something like Magalia's back. Magalia's back. Huh? Where? Rustenburg. Okay, don't worry. Anthony Rustenburg. Okay. 
It's just something being seen. Don't worry. Now, now, <laughs> now, I want you to understand, it's not anyone here who is trying to take your money. No. If you understand the money I have, you can understand. It won't do anything for me. In my church, they know, we count offering before the people, in front of the people. And we tell them, this is, these are the bills. Now tell us, which part of this money can I steal Amen. when you don't even have enough to pay your rent? Yes. And I'm paying it for them. Yes. My TV is on faucet lights now, right? We are on faucet lights. Yes, faucet. That's running at the cost of almost two million US dollars. And tell me, son, is it paid by the church? No. Who it's, pays it? It's paid by you, prophet. I pay it. We don't even have, we don't even have a website to take money from partners that will pay for the TV. No, we don't. But you might ask me, how do you get this money? Why don't we see you on TV begging for money? I've used principles that I'm teaching people, but they have not understood them. People have thought that these are tricks of getting their money. I'm some I'm in spirit with it's not in spirit in mass right now. So what money am I trying to steal from you? I don't need to say this, uh, prophet, but if you can allow me, let me say this. If they can tell you, I come here, do I receive anything here? They give, and what do I do? I was just coming to say that in 32 years of ministry, I said to you, was the last time you were here. You're the first guy that just came and just blessed us and blessed us. And when we gave him an honorarium, he still put money in it and gave it back. It's the first time in 32 years it's happened to our ministry. Yes. So I know what people think. They think we, I'm raising money so that I can get half of it so I can take it there and take it here. That's not what I'm doing. No. If some of this caliber of ministers we have on this earth, if Paul, if Paul would hear this, if Apostle Paul would see some of these ministers, would vomit at the mere sight of you. Am I saying it's bad to give someone an honorary? I'm not saying it's bad. No. But all I'm saying is, shouldn't the motive be God? Why do you come to a ministry and not decide to sow? Sow. If we really believe in sowing and reaping, why are we just preaching it and not practicing it ourselves? Why don't we see all these televangelists who believe in sowing? Why don't they just say, this is my phone number. Call me or send me your account number so I can give into your account and I get the hundredfold. Maybe I just lost you a little bit. Receiving is good. But let's learn as men of God to also give in expectation. You're standing and looking at me. What does it mean? Does he, so it, it means we should not receive honor. We should receive honorariums. But we should also be an example. We should be an example. I know for those who receive honorariums and honorariums, I want to tell you something. It's good to do that. But when you go to a church, try to minister to them first. Don't try. Create relationships. You see, Christianity started in Israel and went to Rome and became a religion. Went to America and it became tradition. Went to Europe and became a tradition. 
went to America and became a business. Came to Africa and became spirituality. You hear men of God asking, so what kind of hotel am I going to sleep in? Is it a five star or a six star? Are you going to put flowers in there? I wanted to invite someone at this women's conference from America and they, were, they wrote us like three pages of needs. Even the, I think it was a Voy water or something. Yes. And cashew nuts. Yes, a specific brand of water. And what? And cashew nuts and some roses and a lot of things. And you see, if you, it's okay. But to put it on paper becomes diabolic. You are no longer ashamed of yourself. Then per day she charged 30,000 US per day to preach. Then we asked what about to stay to hear also what we preach. Said any day I spent is 30,000 US. And then the ticket, you remember the ticket, we didn't need to buy the ticket. No. She was buying a ticket but she, would, she, wanted, a, she, wa she wanted us to give her the cred our credit card number. Number. So that she, so that she can go to South Africa, she can move from South Africa and go to, on her way to our church. So for all you know, she can be in Hawaii. Spending our money. Wanting what from this person? What will she preach that we have not heard before? What prophecy was she going to do? Nothing. And Africa needs to wake up. No, Africa needs to wake up. Right now, after this, I'm going to start prophesying. And all you men of God from that corner to that corner, do you know who you will invite in your church? Listen, I don't want to be invited. Look at this. This is a relationship. I want to make that clear because some people will think, oh, so he wants us to invite him. No. But do you know what? I can preach here. And another American guy who just talks and no, no prophecy can be on that side. And all this wall will be that there. We have entered the celebrity stage. The problem with Africans, anything from outside is good. The genuine people that are coming from outside, they are not asking. They are there because they love. Am I advocating that people should not be given honorariums? I told you no. We should learn to bless the men and the women of God. We should learn to do that. I remember Kenneth Hagin went to another place and for seven days, the pastor never came to give him food. Never. Never. And he didn't know the town, so he stayed in the house and declared a fast with his wife. That's diabolic. Sinful. And yet we are hoping to get into heaven. We are joking. I tell you, I was taken to hell. And I saw hell. And most of the people that feel it are ministers of the gospel. Oh yeah. Ministers that claim they are ministers. They are the ones that will feel hell. You are too much. You are too anointed more than God. Your holiness is too much. You want a better place. Or if only I can get a better house. My spiritual father went to another place, raised for them two million US dollars. In two days, two million out of a church with 300 people. Cash is there. 3 million in the bank. 2 million in the bank. And the church gave him 15,000 US. Am I saying he went there for money? No. But when you decide to give somebody, then really do it. You see, I, I'm trying to create a balance here so that you won't say, prophet said we should never receive anything. What I do might not be what you do.
I want you to understand. Learn to minister to those who minister for your ministry. Learn. Learn. When they give me something and I saw back, listen, I'm not stupid. I told you something. If a thing works, I'll work the daylights out of it. I'm sowing. And when I get out of that office, I say, God, you saw what I did. Solve this and this and this and this because of this seed. He was standing there. My spiritual father, Prophet Victor Kusibuat, took $5,000, put it on the, in fact, one of the, his prophetic friends told him, I'm seeing you involved in an accident. He said, ha, ah, hey, with all the seeds I've given, he took an envelope, put thousands of dollars, and put it on his altar in his own church, threw it there and knelt down, and said, Lord, if my voice is now raspy, that you can't hear, my seed, Speak for me. Just imagine, if I don't prophesy for a year, how many thousands will die? Because in prophecy, we are preventing accidents. Divorces. Just imagine, right now we are standing here, and we have more than 4,000 people. Do you know what that means? That means if we have 100 thieves here, for these three days, they were not stealing. Ah. If there is anything, the government should pay tax to the church. And he's driving. He gets to a place. Watch this. He gets to a place. And there is like a big bend, and there is a mountain on the side. And he's driving his new E class. And he tries to push the car, and the accelerator wouldn't work. He's now at a gradient. And the car would not push forward. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. And the car is not going back, but it's not going forward. And the man with a BMW behind. Beep, 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 beep. And he tries to push it again. Nothing is happening. Nothing. And then he just, the BMW guy just went past him over, took him. And, just, and then turned the bend and he couldn't see him anymore. Then within five to ten seconds, bam, a huge thud. And when the thud occurred, the Mercedes started moving. Went there, just when he got there, the man died on the spot. There was like an 18 wheeler spinning for five minutes behind that mountain. The man with the seat, his car is not moving. The man behind us, the man behind him with a BMW, we had no seat, thought. This man is delaying him. Instead of the prophet dying, the man died. The difference between the two was not because this was a Christian, but because there was a seed. Yeah. Clap your hands for Jesus. Uh, uh, oh, you see, even ministers, look at you, look at you. Come and give your seed right now. Come and give your loan to God. Everybody, I expect everybody to be here. Let's sing, let's sing, let's sing. You are alpha. Do it right now. When the revelation is fresh. Even if you're up there, come down this place. Do it now, do it now, do it now. After this, we are going for prophecy. We worship you. Our Lord, for you are. And the facilities are at the back. If you want to use a card, 
the facilities are at the back please
Jesus. Father, I sanctify their offering in the name of Jesus. May you develop a voice that is more eloquent than their sounds. May this offering be a photograph of their faith. That as you saw it, Father, I pray, just as you saw it, create a miracle for them. Let their churches never starve. Let their families never starve. Let there be a shirt on their back continuously. Shoes on their feet. Let money never be an option. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you for hearing me and answering this prayer with a yes. Amen and amen. amen. Clap hands for yourself. Some of you, this is the best, biggest sacrifice you have ever done. And I know it's not going to be the last. Let it not be done because there is a conference. No. We don't breathe because we are human, but because it's our nature to breathe. We don't love because the Bible commands us to love. We love because we are lovers. We don't have peace because we are peaceful people. But it's in our nature. We just find ourselves doing it. Our problem is we are trying to obey the Bible. When we should obey it until it becomes our nature. So we don't have to obey it. It's just what we do. Shake the hands of someone next to you and say, You broke the backbone of poverty. You broke the backbone of poverty. I'm seeing somebody like Pretoria. You are in Pretoria. There is a thing you are about to do. I don't want you to, to be able to hold on for now. In fact, to Pretoria. In fact, on your name is like M O something. It's like Mo, Moro, Mo, Morocco, Morocco, Pretoria. In fact, just a few months ago, or something like that, you you got engaged, and the person's name. You, please, it is important that right now you just send an email, a text, or something. You engage to someone. I don't know their first name. I don't know their last name. But I know their middle name is Austin. That's the person you engage to, Austin. And the first letter of your surname is like K H O L O, color, color, fellow, or color something. And the middle name is Austin. But your link to that name is Pretoria. Pretoria. 
Pretoria. God is saying, this is the right person, but you need to be grounded in the wet so that it won't fly off. In fact, the surname of this Austin goes like D something like maybe I T S C or something. Tichego was Tichego something. D. Tichego. This one I don't know because since I'm prophesying to people, this one was on TV. I don't know this one now, whether it's on TV or here, but I just know I'm hearing a name and I'm, since I'm dealing with TV, I have to assume it's on TV. Because your connection with the one I'm talking about, there is a connection with someone like Mbuli. 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 In fact, your real name is like Tobeka. Tobeka. And I'm seeing Tobeka and I'm seeing Edenville. And I'm seeing Benoni and Edenville. So I don't know why there is Benoni and Edenville. God is doing something for you right now, wherever you are. Bully, bully, belly. And there's a link between Edenville. Ah, in fact, Edenville is where you come from. But you are now staying in Benoni. Ah. What, who is this one? Who is that? You are Tobeka. Because you see, when I'm looking on the TV and calling someone, then God drops a thing. With me, I wouldn't know now, is it here or there? The first name I heard is on TV. The second one, it didn't say TV. So I just left it as it is. Just stand there, I'll call you again. So that I don't, I don't need to break the floor. I'm also seeing someone on TV. There is this, this is Soweto. Soweto. I'm seeing like Patrick Lumunda. Lumunda. Patrick Lumunda. Even the same Patrick Lumunda. In fact, right now you are actually watching me. This is funny. You are actually watching me. And on your right side is like iron sheets. And there is just this small dish you are getting this channel from. In fact, the electricity you are using, you are stealing the electricity. It's... Because there is your neighbor, your neighbor, your neighbor, I think it's like Tuli or something. Tuli. Tulani is your neighbor. In fact, you guys, one of you just took the thing from ESCOM and another one just climbed on the pole. And please, it's not a problem. Make us aware that it's you. God is doing something with your finances. In fact, I'm hearing within six months from now, you will have your own house and you will be shocked what is taking place. So we need you to call. Ah, I'm told the men I spoke to about the wife yesterday. Are you here or you're not here? No, 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 no. About the wife, that the wife uh, will come back in eight days or something. Is he here or? I heard there is a report of some sort. That he brought to church today. 
I don't know where he is. Who, who got that report? Who got the report? Who got the report? Please find the person who got the report. Who, oh, sir? I'm hearing someone like you have a very strong link with KwaZulu Natal, and this is like Mavis. Mavis. What is ministering to me? Remember, just two weeks ago, in fact, two weeks and one day, at night, around two past one a.m., there was a flow of blood that came out. And you feel like you lost the pregnancy. God is saying the pregnancy is still in there. Ah, uh, in fact, your surname is Mabela. Mabela. Mabela is the surname. Have we found the person? What is the report? The report is that the wife called last night and she said she said she's coming back home on Sunday. <laughs> Uh, uh, remember I said to him if you believe me within 8 days if you believe me if you believe woo, I like the Bible the Bible says believe in God and you shall be established yes. it never says you shall prosper you shall be established Benjamin Remenga Benjamin, remember, let me see where you are. I'm seeing like it's like Congo or some country. Congo. Congo. It's Congo. It's like Benjamin, remember. In fact, to be just sure, your TV is sharp. It's the sharp mech. And I'm saying, this is not like a flat screen. This is like a big thing. Ah, in fact, it's a 14-inch screen. As I'm talking to you right now, you are asking your girlfriend next to you if this is you I'm talking about. You see, this one is not believing me at all. I'm talking to you, Benjamin Remenka. This is Congo. Congo, the Congo brother of you. Now, you still don't believe this part again. Your girlfriend is wearing a skirt that has got flowers at the bottom, like here. At the bottom. There are flowers there. In fact, the flowers are green and red. And you people need to be married. Because remember last night. In fact, for the final straw, inside she's wearing a red thing inside the skirt. Now you know it's you now. Now he is believing me. In fact, the name of your, your girlfriend is Judith. Judith. Now, if all this does not convince you, call us, my brother, call us, our sister, if your brother doesn't, call us. God is doing something about you. Because I'm seeing they were talking about firing you from work. But there is restoration right now. I serve a God who knows no distance. I serve a God who knows no distance. Something's changing, she's low, 
change your situation I speak an end to the troubles of the family with regards to finances from right now as I speak to you right now God is going to shift your financial status to a level where those who thought you were nothing they'll begin to see you as something because there is no real job we can talk about it's like money. You people, when you hold it, it doesn't really yes, do anything. Man of God, yes, it's true. And this is like the whole people, everyone around yes, you. Man of God. Money, you don't know what happened. Yes. Come on, ila frahate. Me me ne me ma 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 ma. Sees glory. Feels like heaven on earth. What do you want God to do for you? What do you want God to do for you? Okay, let's a find another thing, a one. Things, no, no, no. Let's find another one. You see, I'm I'm a person who knows I'm anointed, so I don't need to wait 20 minutes for you to tell me what God is going to do. Let me ask for someone. What do you want God to do for you? Okay. He, he, he begged my pardon. He begged. Okay. Uh, I, I can't be teaching you these things. Then two minutes later, you have forgotten. What do you want God to do for you? I want, I want God to restore my family. And um, I'm also a member of a church. So I want God to uh, restore our church because we've been trying to win souls to, to rebuild our church Since our when you say our build or rebuild our church what do you what are you talking about um okay we've we have grown last year a lot uh but then our pastor left and then people have moved your pastor left. Have left go to the front go to the front sister so do you, do, does anyone know you here sister does anyone know you huh are these your things these, these are your things? Yes. Okay, so you are now in charge of these things. Because you never know. Some didn't come to worship. They come to make your life different. Using stealing. Uh-huh, so please. Okay, go to the front. What happened to you? Operation. What did happen to your eye? There was a group. Restoration in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Things change see his glory heaven on you something moving something's changing see his glory just like heaven on you something's moving something's changing see his glory something's moving something's changing I'll talk to you, all this. I'm 
I'm going to talk to you guys. Okay, stand there and shush. What language is this? Huh? I had, um, I had, I had, God was going to take you to a place called Royal something stadium. You. Royal Mafokeng. She doesn't want prayer. Please, you can go back. It's okay. Ah, God was going to take you to Royal Mafa King Stadium. There was an opportunity just a few seconds ago that she would be used to be really announcing when football starts on radio it Royal Mafa King. She, no, 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 no. It's no longer going to happen. Miss your opportunity. Ah, this one has not happened now. I'm a news reader. So I know you are a news reader. This wave. I, I'm still prophet. I'm still uh, what radio are you? What way are you reading your news? I read the news in the morning. In Wait, which radio TV? The, radio station. Which radio station? Northwest FM. This was going to be an upgrade. Come close. My sister, something good is supposed to happen to you. Thank you. Thank because as I was ready to prepare miracle money, God showed me a bank like FNB. I bank at FNB. Uh. I don't know what you want. You see, in the United Kingdom, there is no FNB. In Zimbabwe, there is no FNB. So you don't just come here and think someone banks at FNB. It has to be written in the atmosphere for us to look at and say FNB. God will change your situation. Even now when you're F, because I was looking at your account. Right now, as I'm talking to you, there is no money to talk about in your account right now. There is nothing no, nothing, nothing zero nothing. right now in your account now. Because I got to the bank, and as I entered, the angel said, let's enter. And I saw F&B written here. And you bank where? F&B. When I got to the bank, the Lord ministered to me that this woman, nothing enters here. And I said, what happens? He said, no, look, her salary will be around 6000 But what she gets is 4200 4300 That's true, profit. Oh. I get 6,200 rand. You get what? 6,200. 6,200. Then you get deductions up yes. to 4,000 something. Yes, prophet. It's true. Where do you stay, by the way? I live in Rustenbeck. About Rustenbeck. I'm from Mafiken. You come from Mafiken? Yes, prophet. Live in Rustenbeck. What is that mountain called? Ah, Mahalispe. Okay. Now. <laughs> oh, forget that one. I'm tired. No, 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 no. When I'm tired, that's when I prophesy big, so I'm tired. <laughs> Send me, I'm still ministering to you. Can you minister? 
Let's sing it. Let's sing it. Just raise your hands. Let's worship together. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Just like heaven on Just a minute. Just a minute. Is, is there anyone like Tembo who is getting engaged to a young lady? Is Tembo here? Is a guy? Tembo. Is there anyone like Tembo who is getting he's engaged? To a fair, a young lady who is light in complexion. She's fair in complexion. Are you here? If you are here, just come. Just come toward me. In the meantime, just raise your hands. Let's worship. Something is indeed moving. Something is indeed changing. Something's changing. She is glory. Just like Galilee. Something's moving. It's changing. Where have you come from? Eastern Cape. Eastern Cape? Yes. And how far is that from here? Um, next to KZN. How far? I think it's 600 and something kilometers. Oh, so it's far, 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 far away. Yes. May God grant you the desires of your heart today. Thank you. Man Are you alone? I'm going with my pastor. And who is your pastor? Oh, your pastor here. May God grant you the desires of your heart because there are a lot of struggles that you've gone through, a lot of disappointments that you've gone through. It's true, man of God, it's true. Even the issue of marriage, there's nothing to talk about. Yes. Relationships, people come and go, nothing seems to work. Yes. And at night as you sleep, you see people coming in your dreams. Everything ends in the dreams. We want to break that spirit today in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Because it's the same spirit that's affecting your finances. You try to do this, it doesn't work. Business, you try to do this, it doesn't seem to work. Everything you try doesn't work. Even jobs, everything. Everything is just wrong. It's very true. We serve a God who works and specializes in the impossible. So you have nothing to worry about. How many know we have a guarantee in Jesus Christ? We have a guarantee. We have a guarantee. As long as we are in Him and as long as He is in us, we will never struggle another day in our lives. We will never struggle another day in our lives. Hallelujah. You will never struggle another day in your life. And I'm here to encourage any young person to just rise, rise up, arise and shine. Arise and shine. God is ready to use you. God is ready to use you. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it because God knows you can do it and you were created and made for such a time as this for such a time as this papa come no the gentleman standing at the back just come let me talk to you let me talk to him just come forward come forward come forward and who is this to you just come who are you with come where where is she where is the wife Kitty. Don't mention any names in case God is going to say that exact name. So if you say something and God wanted to say it, it won't help you. It won't boost your faith. Just stand with your husband. How long have you been married? All right, just come, come, come closer. <laughs> How many love this God who speaks? Who is this? Who is this? You are blessed, Mama, in Jesus' name. You are blessed. We cancel the spirit of disease, sickness. We cancel it. Blood pressure, diabetes. We cancel. We cancel. She has blood pressure and she has diabetes. We cancel it in Jesus' name. Yes. We cancel it. We cancel it. We remove that sickness in Jesus' mighty name. We need to pray for your husband as well. 
sickness, I was seeing something. What's happening in, in your body, in your stomach? What's happening? Because I'm seeing sickness. Sickness in him. All right. Just, all right. Just stand. Come closer. Come closer. Don't be nervous. We don't serve a nervous God. And you see, if God reveals something, it means he's ready to redeem you. He's ready to redeem you. And if you only believe, if only you believe, nothing is impossible with him. You believe him? You believe God can do something new today? Yes, I believe God can do something. God is about to bring restoration. This conference has been about restoration. How many believe that? How many know that? A lot of lives have been restored. A lot of churches have been restored. A lot of marriages have been restored. God is ready to bring restoration into your family, into your home. Because for too long, do you know that you should have been better off than where you are today? Do you know this? Yes, ma'am. Growing up as a young man, he always told himself, I'll be a great man one day. I'll do great things one day. But it seems as the years came and went, things started going wrong. This doesn't work. That doesn't work. But God is ready to take you to your rightful position. Do you believe it? I believe it. Do you believe it? I believe it. Because I was seeing something in the realms of the spirit. It's like the first time I laid my eyes on you, I saw something in the realms of the spirit. I saw you praying. I saw you praying. And in your prayer, you were asking God that God, I want whatever is left out of my life, whatever plan, your perfect plan for the remainder of my years, I want it to be made manifest in Jesus' name. With my children, with business, it's about time. Something happened in our lives. Because I was seeing you in a house. Where do you live? Do you live around? You said where? In Flagstop. In Flagstop. Where do you live? In Flagstop. Flagstop. That, that's close by? Close that's by. close by. Okay. Because I'm seeing a house. And in that house, it's like, it's not painted on the outside. There is no paint on the house. Yes, mama. And it is two bedrooms. Yes, mama. Two bedrooms. You have yes. two bedrooms in your two house? Bedrooms. Yes, mama. And the house is not painted on the outside? And no. it's like, it's like there's this, there's this, like a stove that's in your kitchen and the stove is not working well it's not working well it's, it's true, slow it's the true. plates are slow yes, it's true mama it's true it's true it is true god is ready to bring restoration into your home oh thank you jesus just lift up your hands lift up your two hands lift up your two hands What's happening with court cases? I'm seeing you making monthly payments. Yes, Mama. What's happening with that? I was owing what the happened? medical scheme for the child who had a, a, an operation is 2003. Then I'm still paying it up to now. You are and still I, paying I'm it? Still, I'm st I owe the bank because I, we are not working. And when I was bothered from the Department of Education, I, mm -hmm. I was very sick. And in 2001, I got a medical uh, uh, I was grounded for medic on medical grounds. So I'm not working. So we started so this is what the husband. This is, is what I was seeing. It was yeah. like people taking you to court for non-payment. And yes. now you had to come up with a monthly, monthly thing payment. that you have to give it back yes. bit and by I also bit. Owe the bank I also and also at the bank. The bank yes. Let's give the Lord a mighty head clap of praise today. We want to pray for supernatural debt cancellation. It's about time you had a breakthrough. Yes, it's about time. Yes, mama. And your time is now. Yes, mama. Where do you go to church, the two of you? Discipleship Ministries in Clockstop. Discipleship Ministries. You need to start praying as a family. You need to start praying as husband and wife. You pray together. Mama. Pray together. Yes, mama. From now onwards, pray together as a family, as a unit. Yes, mama. Because how many know two is better than one? Two is so much better than one. Yes, Raise up your hands. And I want the people of God to stretch their hands toward you. We want to cancel sickness because I was seeing a problem arising in your body. A serious problem arising in your body. Starting with blood pressure. And then the doctor was going to say there's a this, uh, cyst growing. And then it would go to diabetes. Yes, and the, diabetes. You are diabetic already. Yes, and the diabetes was going to affect even your eyesight. You find it difficult to see. We want to cancel that today in Jesus' name. Just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Precious Holy Spirit, touch them. Touch them. Touch them, Holy Spirit. 
Just leave her. Just leave her. God is working something new in your life and in your bodies right now. Right now, touch them, Holy Spirit. Touch them, Holy Spirit. May you live up to your foolish potential and like a palm tree in Lebanon. May you grow. You see, the palm trees in Lebanon start bearing fruit in their old age. So it doesn't matter how old you are, God can still do something new in your life. Something new. Touch them. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Brother, you'll see it. You'll see it. Just get closer to God. Closer than you've never been close before. Yes, Mama. And he'll restore you to the glory that you are supposed to have. To yes, where Mama. you are supposed to be. You yes, need Mama. to draw closer to God. Be a friend of God. Yes, he'll move you from this two-bedroom house I was seeing. Yes, to Mama. things you never thought you would have. Yes, Thank you. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Thank you. From a, a stove that doesn't work properly to plenty. God is going to bless you in order for you to be a blessing to others. Thank you, Mama. If you believe it, clap hands for Jesus right now. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Thank you. Let's worship him. Just raise your hands and worship. Just raise your hands. Focus on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is ready to deliver your miracle today. If you only believe, if you only believe. I hear breakthrough for ministers. I hear the sound of breakthrough. The sound of miracles. The sound of restoration. The sound of restitution. What the devil stole, we are taking back in the name of Jesus. This is the crime you have committed. Listen, each and every one of you, this is your crime. You have been found guilt of poverty. You have been found guilt of sickness. You have been found guilt of lack. Listen, listen, listen to your, to your case. You have been found guilt of poverty. You have been found guilt of lack. And here is your judgment. I sentence you to a lifetime of prosperity. You have been found guilty. Of a disease that I call lack of soul winning, of having small churches. I said, You have been found guilty of having small churches, and here is your judgment. I judge you and give you a sentence of mega churches.
you have been found guilty. I said you have been found guilty of sickness. Here is your sentence. Divine health for life. You have been found guilty of bad marriages. Here is your sentence. The judge of heaven has sat down and is about to put his hammer to the wood. And here it is. Your sentence. Good marriages for life. And you have been found guilty of churches with no power. Lack of power. You are guilty of lack of power. And I sentence you to a life of demonstration of God's power. I see the devil in the realm of the spirit running right now with his tail between his knees as usual. Yes. I see you coming out. Yes. I said, I see you coming out. 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 Sing holy, holy spirit, holy, holy spirit, holy spirit, holy, holy, holy spirit, oh, holy, 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 holy spirit, holy spirit, shout holy, holy, holy spirit, oh, holy, holy, holy spirit, holy spirit, holy spirit, holy, holy, holy spirit, holy, 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 holy spirit. Spirit, holy, holy spirit, what a friend we have. What can you do without the Holy Spirit? Mm. Good afternoon, Holy Spirit. <laughs> what can you do? He's all I have. The Bible says, The same Lord is the same Spirit, the same Lord is the same Spirit. There is something great happening. When you leave this place, you are the one you need. Listen to me carefully. Are you here? You need to bribe someone in order for them to bribe you, to convince you that you didn't receive anything here. Come on. I don't know if you are hearing this. I said after, after tonight, 
to go back home and say I didn't receive anything it, it I don't know you have to bribe someone in order to bribe you so you can think you didn't receive so you get someone from America bribe them brother bribe me so that I can say I didn't receive anything you know what go go out of Go, go out there and say I was somewhere I was sucked into the anointing I was sucked into the anointing and I came out pure those are the only words I was sucked into the anointing I came out pure sing them Listen to the song of the spirit right now. These are words that just dropped. I was soaked into the anointing and I came out pure. Raise your hands as he sings. We this is a song that just arrived today, right now, in your presence. From heaven. Fire pure. Pray where you are, pray. Soak in the anointing. Soak in the anointing. Came out pure. I came out pure. This is fire burning brightly. Jesus, thank you. Oh, secure. Come and soak in. arrived fire burning brightly making you secure and changing every situation let his love arise never feel Can you to shine? That was so the anointing. Open your heart right now. Make me pure. Yes, I was so the anointing. Lord, make me.
It is always good to be in an environment when God gives you a song and the person singing, the musician, is able to catch your spirit. Oh, oh, what a blessing you have there. He's able to catch the spirit. We we're talking with my wife right there and we said, when your hand sings, it's like you are hearing something from a radio or something. Yeah, it's like, it's like this radio or something. You don't need to add anything. You don't need to get in the studio. You can just record right there and take it home. I really encourage everybody to get the CDs that he has done and the team. Just get it. This is pure God. You see, when the song has nothing to do with you but just God, it moves God and it removes burdens. they recorded is called pure God <laughs> it's in the Bible says when we speak speak as of the oracles of God what we speak is prophetic even if I cough <coughs> prophetic <laughs> everything is prophetic that prophets do if I cough if I sneeze that is a prophetic sneeze. It helps something. Brother, don't worry. Your heart has been seen. Because you were thinking I'm going without forgetting you now. I don't forget. If someone's heart is pure, you, Jesus. I see it. I just see it. Your biggest investment. I want you to be very, very careful about starting new churches. Because God is ministering to me from there. I saw a dissension in ranks. Where you will start... If it was not for today, you were going to start five branches. It's true. But God is ministering to me. Those you have right now, grow them and be the father over them. And the other people from your project, your project will begin to do something. Yes, Lord. This is why I was saying, because I turned 34. Yes, I'm an old man now. And I have four boys and all of them prophets. Oh yeah. And I know some people have asked me, so how come you prophesy your wife prophesies? How can it be that you are a prophet and your wife is a prophetess? I said I don't need to answer that stupid question. I'm not God. That's number one. But if I'm going to try to answer you, I'll just say you've got to Isaiah 8, I believe, 
verse number three says and Isaiah went into his wife the prophetess and she bare as conceived and bare a son so by being a wife of a prophet it can qualify you to be a prophetess because we never we don't even know any prophets that Isaiah's wife did we don't know we don't know who it is we've never seen Isaiah's wife prophesy yet the Bible says Isaiah slept with his wife the prophetess in uh, chapter number 8 verse number 3 and she conceived and bare a son the prophetess I'm at an advantage because my wife is a prophetess because she prophesies not because she's married to me now I don't know if you understand and why is she a prophetess? Not just because she prophesies, but because God called her into the office of a prophet. Because there are so many men of God and women of God that when they have a dream and that dream comes to pass, boy, we are in trouble. The next morning, they call themselves prophetess. Then the Bible says, if there is a prophet among you, I will come to him and visit him. And the way visit, the word visit, it means I will tell him myself that he is one. Not by thinking. You will get a vision about it. And be careful, devils also will give you dreams and visions. So, there was going to be a big mess to the extent that your church was going to grow. After growing big, there was going to be a problem where someone you are going to put in charge of the church was going to try and steal it. And then influence two more people to steal it, steal their own. Then they would have started their church and then they will go out there and begin to malign you and say a lot of bad things about you. But your hope is in this child. This is why I saw 34, 35. Your child. Your son. Your son. How old is he? 35. 35. <laughs> And the Lord is ministering to me. Just as I ministered Pretoria and Cape Town. It's not going to be Cape Town alone. I saw Pretoria written. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. I saw Cape Town. Then I saw Pretoria. I'm from Cape Town. So it's not just Cape Town. Pretoria, be ready for Pretoria is going to open a big door. And I'm seeing a lot to do with a lot of also. A lot of when I call, what I call, you see there is healing. Then there is working of miracles. So if people don't know healing, and they see Prophet Cobas here, Prophet praying for people and they think it's healing only. The thing that causes him to grab a person out of a wheelchair and make them stand there is working a miracle. Yes. No, no, you see, I, I don't think they understand this. There is a gift of healing. Then there is a gift of working of miracles. In other words, when you work a miracle out. So many people will try to go out there and just grab people out of wheelchairs and just stand there. We have a heap of people falling down after him. is waking of miracles. I'm seeing it coming to you. It's a strong thing, mantle that is falling from him also. Not, when I say falling from him, I don't mean taking from him. I'm talking about an impartation. Impartation means a part of. A part of. But the point is, if you disengage yourself from him, in other words, the part that he has given, because you have his part right now as I'm speaking, you already have it. But there's going to be an increase. But that increase, when it happens, if you disengage yourself, you also disengage yourself from that part. Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. So, your message today is, you are going to see great things. And I don't know how he was called, who you are, how he was called, his name was called. But the Lord is ministering to me, just as his name prophesies, like you say, he's also, he will also become a king in his area. David, right? David. My name is so you, he's also going to be a king, King Dave, yeah. <laughs> in My your area. And things are going to move well 
to a point where you say, God, but this young man here is the one that will give him a lot of success in ministry. But he needs to take time with him. Get him into the word. Because he was going to get into some error with some trying to get into revelations of Prophet Corpus and, and then extending things and you know, trying to say, you see this connection and that connection and that connection. And that was going to end his success. So you need to ground him in the word and try to give him boundaries so that he doesn't get into extremes. Because when you have the real word and you say, wow. But then you say, if I ate this to eat, it will be better. If I ate this, all people will say, wow. Uh. Yeah. 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 Something big is about to take place. May God increase everything that you came here for. Because you were sitting there and saying, if I can only get a prophetic word. And God is saying, no, what you don't you need is just encouragement. The years that the kanga woman has eaten are going to be restored to you. Amen. Amen, prophet. And there is a lot a lot God is going to do with the issues of head, past heads. The people were using you. They used you, then they turn around and say something better against yes, you. Prophet. In fact, sometimes you, you move and you get to a place and people like you the first time. When you go back the second time, they no longer like you. Yes. Remember your friend before you came here, your friend in school. Something you didn't really, it's like, I'm seeing someone looking at your dress. See, you've got a dress and they are looking at your dress and looking at this like, wow, this is nice. This is nice. And from doing that, your grace was taken. Oh my God. It's like a forced impartation. So things that you want, you can see it in people that were lower than you. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly like that, prophet. But God is going to move things in a direction, there's going to be grace, grace and favor, grace and favor over your life. A lot of it to an extent where what do you want God to do for you? Important. That's the spirit of the Lord unto you. If you let go, if you let go and let God and begin to understand God will use whosoever he wants. It's not whether they are tall, brown, black, or polka dot. There shall be a miracle that you begin to perform that you will be known for just that specific one. To the extent that when people want to get that healing, they will come to you. You will be used with matters of healing the heart. Thank you, Prophet. The heart. Spiritually and physically. Prophet. You, your issue is over. Thank if there is any financial deliverance you need it, it's over. I take it. Take it. Who did you come with, my brother? Who did you come with? Who did you come with? All these guys. All these guys. Hey! Where are you coming from? from That's where I come from. I'm joking, man. I'm joking. You come from Rhodesia. This man needs to be beaten. What's your name? What's your name? Andre. Andre, is it another Andres. one of, of Andrew? Andres. Yeah. It's like Andrew. 
Now do you understand my point? Why I called you? What's your name, by the way? Stephen. Stephen, and what's your brother's name? Andrew. What's your other brother? <laughs> I just wanted to connect you two guys. That's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> I just wanted to, to show you that it's not, there is nothing called coincidence, my brother. Nothing called coincidence. You have three brothers. I know that already. Three brothers. What's the first one's name? Andrew. Uh huh. Mark. Uh huh. Peter. Peter. And you? Stephen. Stephen. Ah. And my redition friend. What again? What's your name again? Andres. Andres. Okay. Amen. I don't know why all of you like this. Be friends with this man, because he's going somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I can assure you this man is going somewhere. The days of 40 people, 50 people, 60 people are over. Because even sometimes when you have a conference, to get to seven days is like not even a blessing. <laughs> yes. Even if you call people say today we are doing a big thing, people don't attend. But it's because you were ministering to the wrong crowd. You are trying to find white people in the church. Your ministry is to black people. Stop being a spiritual racist. This young man will be used. But his ministry, stand up, my brother, because I want to see you. You see, you are going to be used so extraordinarily. But change your focus for ministry. Mm -hmm. yes. Go to the Zulus. Yes. I, I don't know. And let me tell you something about the Zulus or anyone, any other African. We only respond to love. We don't respond to any other thing. Love. If we find somebody who loves, who really cares, who shows I'm different. Your ministry is to black people. All this is white people you were trying to find and if you could, you could do Jesus. Indians oh and stuff like that. Forget about those things. You are a black man's person, you. <laughs> so, I cancel the spirit of spiritual racism. Go to black people and I can assure you by this time next day, you'll be singing a new tune. Hallelujah. I see somebody here prospering. I see someone here increasing. Everyone under the influence of my voice. Success is yours. Prosperity is yours. Longevity in life is yours. Bible says in the book of Peter, joy unspeakable. In other words, joy you can't explain. You don't, there is no joke.
in the name of Jesus. your husband He's at home. Jesus. we need to pray for you because as I see you here you say you have a husband and you have a ring but in the realm of the spirit it's like this marriage has been cancelled mm. it's like there is a certificate but that certificate doesn't mean anything God reveals in order to redeem. What does he do? He's a librarian. A what? Librarian. We really need to cover you with an anointing. Because the ring is there. The certificate can be there. But they are decorations. It's not what it is supposed to be. There is a lot of room. But that room, you people are not covering that room. You need to cover that room. I said you need to cover that room. You need to cover that room. Listen. Listen, you too. There is something about you that God ministered as a pastor of you. It's your miracle is simple. This woman here has got a heart for the things of God. Amen. There is like a teaching anointing Amen. upon her. That Amen. if she hears a teaching, she's like glue. Amen. She will just Get it and sh straight to the heart. Amen. There is something about you that God will do. Something for you. You see, Smith will go say something like this. God will skip a thousand times to reach you if you have faith. Uh, take it off. Pass by there. Your surname is M. Mpanya. Thank you, Jesus. Go and, and listen to me. I passed by there, and the Lord said, What your father failed to do? Because he was meant to be big. But nothing came out of it. And yes, the Lord said, everything you failed. There is an anointing for what I call the merry blessing. Just 10 days, okay. For what I call the merry blessing. If Joseph had decided to sleep in the garage, Joseph, the father, the stepfather of Jesus, If he had decided to sleep in the garage that day, do you think Jesus was going to be born? Yes. Because Jesus' pregnancy does not need Joseph. Yes. I didn't hear this. Your success is not coming because of a man or because of a woman or because of a loan. Your success is going to come from Jehovah. And your man as well has got this apostolic call upon his life. Amen. Apostolic call. But you guys are going to help each other. There is an yes. apostolic calling. Do you know why I, I saw what I saw about the apostolic calling? Because as I passed by there, I saw Apostle Paul standing by him. Yes. <laughs> What's his name? What's his your name? His name is Paul. Okay. <laughs> 
my name is Paul. Shall we all stand and just thank God, raise our hands, thanksgiving. Wow. What an awesome time. I believe you're all blessed and touched. You're on the gallery. I think you don't feel too far away from us. Be blessed. <laughs> Be blessed, you wonderful people of God. Thank you all the people that joined us. There's a group of South Korea that joined us this morning. Only came in today. Bless you all. For those who are staying, remember we got an awesome meeting tonight around the pool. We're going to have a pool meeting. We're going to anoint the water and you can all walk through the pool and get a super anointing. I'm going to preach, and prophesy and heal the sick. Thank you, Prophet Hubert Angel and Prophetess Beverly Angel. Bless you all. Thank God for the gift that he sent us for this conference. I think it was good. I think it was more than good. I think it was excellent. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We send these people away where they are going. We just bless their ministry with what they blessed us with. We say let, they, let them get a great harvest on all the seed they've sown. Whatever they said, we just thank you, my Father. We thank you that every person will receive from God. We pray rain on all the seed. We call supernatural harvest spiritually, physically, financially, ministry-wise. In their homes, no sickness, no disease, no accidents. No evil shall come near our dwelling places. Psalm 91, to be the portion of every person to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, where angels are encamping round about them. I ask that angels will start appearing to every person, that they will see the angels working for them, and that we will realize who we are in Christ, rulers over all. Come on, say it. I am a ruler over all. The Bible says in Hebrews 2, God left nothing outside of your control. Nothing. You are a supreme ruler. The universe is in your control. You can stop storms. You can release rain. You can bring health and healing and prosperity. You've got a voice. Use it. The beginning of this year, we had that awesome conference in February. If you want to change the scenery, you've got to change the sound. Before there was sight, there was sound. God said, and then it was. And God said to you, whatsoever you say, when you believe you're going to have it, use your mouth. The righteousness which is of faith speaks. Father, we bless the food for this afternoon. We pray that we'll have a wonderful lunch together. That everybody will just be supernaturally blessed. Enjoy your lunch. We see you at 7 tonight. Don't miss tonight's meeting. It's going to be from heaven. Bless you all. Don't forget to get some products in our bookshop, the CD. There's a new CD out called Rulers Over All with some of those beautiful songs that we sang here during the conference. Get the CD, get the DVDs of the meetings. You can get them unedited. And go and be blessed. Bless somebody with it. Don't all leave today. We've got a meeting tonight. Thank you for coming. We love you. We love you all. We love you all. We love you all. It'll be great. And I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights But when I look around, I think things over All of my good days outweigh my bad, I won't complain The Lord's been good to me, oh he's been good I don't mind.
tears away Turn my midnight in today So I thank you, Lord I won't complain But don't remove somebody else's, just remove your own if you are leaving. Thank you, God bless.